Hey, everybody. This is Jordan McCullough with the Crohn's Veteran Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I am joined by my co-host, CJ Cabrera. Uh, Renika Wood is off today. How are you doing, CJ? Doing all right. I'm doing all right, man. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fabulous. And so, um, so I'm super excited. Uh, we, we are honored and grateful to have a legendary colitis veteran uh, with us today coming out of Link, uh, uh, Lincolnshire, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, Ricardo Rico Franco is a world champion, bare knuckle boxer and pro MMA fighter with an impressive uh, 6-0 undefeated record. Uh, Rico also fights against ulcerative colitis every day, which he has been so gracious to share with his journey with us today. Rico, how you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic now. Thank you. Yeah, doing uh, doing really great. So, uh, yeah, really good. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I mean, well, you know, before, you know, I'm just, it's, I mean, this, you know, seeing, you know, seeing your story and, you know, seeing, you know, your, your, your stuff on Instagram, it, it just kind of really struck me. It's just fascinating, fascinating stuff. And so, you know, so, you know, so beyond, I'm just curious about, you know, just a little about your background, you know, childhood, you know, kind of like what you were doing before you were fighting and before, you know, you know, colitis and everything. Yeah, so uh, just a normal child, really, just had a normal upbringing, um, I had a good upbringing and uh, I was always active, like always doing sports, football, swimming and, uh, you know, I just always liked to be active and doing something, do you know what I mean? There was something there that I just needed and I finally found it, that was obviously fighting, but there was always something there. I went through a few different sports, but you know, I was, I was quite an active kid. I loved to be adventurous and uh, yeah, I had a good little upbringing and then just got into the fighting. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> crazy. Yeah, so, like, like, so what, um, yeah, so what, so what sports were you, were you kind of interested in, you know, or, 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 what were some of the sports that you, that you were playing? Mainly football when I was, uh, well, I started swimming uh, when I was young. And I swam, um, I was swimming for like the local club, uh, quite, com I was doing like competitions and that as well. And obviously when you're a kid, you grow out of things. So I, I went into football and uh, I was in, I was playing football for so many years, really competitive as that. And uh, you kind of, and after football, I kind of grew out of that. And that's when I started the boxing, but it was mainly football and swimming to start with. And, and then, you know, like a few bits on the side, I used to like do, different sports like in between but and I committed to football really and swimming that was the two main ones yeah so awesome, awesome CJ as for for boxing did you jump into bare knuckle boxing right away or did you do like with the gloves and stuff no um started uh MMA mixed martial arts mm. um I probably had over 60 odd fights um all together in multiple disciplines so um Muay Thai K1 and a few uh, white collar boxing fights, but mainly um, amateur mixed martial arts, probably 26, 27 fights. And then um, Muay Thai, boxing, K1. And then I went into pro MMA. I'd, I've had 10 pro MMA fights. Wow. Um, and then that is when I went into BKB and started. Just I only went in to try it just to see what it was like. And I didn't expect it to take off like this. <laughs> uh, and that's well, like Go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, yeah, so, um, so what's so what would you say is the the, the biggest difference, you know, fighting, um, you know, from yeah, between bare, bare, between like bare knuckle and you know, actual gloves. Yeah. So uh, obviously with gloves, there's a lot of padding and stuff. But um, for me, it was a it was a good transition from MMA, which is four ounce gloves. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not much. There's not much padding on four ounce, and the range, the range when you're punching and sparring is quite similar to bare knuckle. So. It wasn't actually a big, um, it, what I was expecting was a lot worse than it was because um, I'm used to fighting MMA. Right. When, when, I, when I spar with boxing gloves on and take off boxing gloves to MMA gloves, there's a massive difference. And that's what it's like. That's why I think MMA fighters are doing well in bare knuckle because the mm. transition from gloves to, you know, smaller gloves, like finding the range. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a massive difference and it can like mess a lot of game. It's, you got to have different game plans. It, it is a big, big difference to be fair. It's more realistic. But definitely. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, it would be awesome. You know, it'd be awesome to, uh, to, to go to a bare knuckle fight, you know, sometime. I, I, I live in, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I live in, I live in Las Vegas. Right. And so, um, you know, Nevada over here, it's kind of one of those like fighting capitals. And so that's something that I've always wanted to do is, you know, see a fight. And so it's so especially seeing like a, 
Put up a box of them, that'd be super awesome. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How's the how's the training for that? For yeah, it's, um, it's it's pretty similar. I get a lot of questions uh, for this as well. Uh, people think you're dipping your hands in petrol and glass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not like it's not like that. It's not like blind Van Dam. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's it's pretty much similar training. Like I, I still spar in boxing gloves. Um, a lot of times I'll I'll punch the bag in MMA gloves as well, um, and. Mm-hmm. I'll do a bit of light sparring in MMA gloves as well, but you can't really, you can't spar bare knuckle. You can't, you can't spar hard in MMA gloves because you'll end up getting knocked out. And you know what I mean? So I just do everything similar in boxing gloves, but because I've got plenty of exp- fight experience already, um, like I, I could just jump in now. Do you know what I mean? So I don't really, yeah. But for people who haven't got that fight experience, then I'd definitely get a lot more fight experience for doing bare knuckle, definitely. But it's good that I've had a good background to then jump in, use the experience. So yeah, it's it's good, like really good. For your knuckles, how did you train your knuckles to be so strong? <laughs> because I know it takes a lot of strength and endurance to keep your knuckles up. I know. So uh, I sometimes punch the punch bag um, a little bit, just bare knuckle. But obviously, you need a bit of wrist for support. Um, but. Sometimes do a few press ups on the knuckles as well to condition them, but um, yeah, just they're pretty solid and conditioned already. To be fair, so uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. To be fair, my, my hands, I've, touch wood, have been pretty. I've not um, had one injury after six fights because I think, I think it's the way you fight bare knuckle. Um, you've got to fight a bit smarter than just going in brawling because you know you got to be, you got to kind of pick them shots a bit more. A lot of people who go in brawling that they end up coming out with swollen hands and you know what I mean? The the recovery is ages. So like my last fight, I kind of just picked them shots and everything just worked perfect. So I didn't even have any hand injuries after that last fight. Um after the last two fights, and that was thirteen rounds altogether. So you'd think they'd be messed up. <laughs> wow. so the way you really fight, you've just got to punch them and not get hit. <laughs> it's gotta be Clever the way you fight, yeah, really. Okay. But it's yeah, it's it's technical. So uh, yeah, so like so, what are so what are some um, what are some what, what are some goals that you still have in the sport? Would you say? Go over to the states. Go over to the states and uh, you know fight some big names out there. Um, or even if they come over here, you know, I want to fight some big names. I basically want to travel the world and fight, and you know, just get paid. That's basically. Oh. And the goal, the goal is to fight MMA again because um, before I turned ill, uh, before last lockdown, before the COVID strike, I was sparring with uh, UFC fighter Mark Diakuzi. He was I was his main sparring partner for the UFC, and like that just gave me more confidence of mm. going into MMA again because I had I probably had two years out of a mixed martial arts because I I started the bare knuckle and concentrated on that for a while, and then. I was just about to get back into MMA again, but then I fell ill. So, um, mm. yeah, it's just if the uh, promotions will let me fight with the Alostromy bag, that's the only... Mm. And if I can find a bit of a... I will fight, 100% I'll fight MMA. That's just in my mindset. I'll fight MMA, but um, it's just... I need to find the right support belt and guard just that will cover it, you know, or, and the, the venue and the event that will let me fight on it. But yeah, with boxing, boxing is pretty easy because the boxing guard comes above the um, the stoma, so yeah. that's all good. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the kind of transition, yeah, to talk talk about the class and the class a little bit, like you know. So yeah, first, yeah, first of all, yeah. So you're are, are there any products on the market for MMA? You know that that can you know for stomas. You know, like do, I mean, are there, you know, is there anything that you can buy? Okay, you're saying that the uh, that the uh, the boxing the, that the boxing shorts cover that up, but for MMA, is there anything similar that you know people people that are in your same situation can can, can go out and buy? Yeah, um, I've seen a few things like there's a few like guards. Do you know when you get the the cut uh, the groin protector for yeah. MMA, you can kind of get similar to the similar like cup and guard for the stoma, and then mm-hmm. you get like a little belt that comes around. So I reckon that could work, and then. You've just got to figure out what works, really. I've, I've, I'll have to just trial a few things and see what's working. And 
get a nice tight support belt and make sure if someone kicks me or knees me to the stomach, like the impact won't won't cause any damage. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's just about. I've done a bit of grappling. Um, I did I did this bit of grappling last week, and uh, it it was pretty fine. I could you know move around and stuff. So cool. yeah, I've just got to trial a few things. <laughs> okay. Have you ever had like any accidents with the with the bag or anything while in a fight? Uh, no, I've um, because I've not had a fight yet since um, I've had the surgery. Mm. So this will be my first one in August. Um, okay. So I only had the surgery. I only got the alostomy bag in November. Okay. So just gone. So it's it's only been about five six months, but my recovery's recovery's been super quick, and um, I've booked a fight for the rematch August fourteenth. So quick turnaround. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be fighting this year at all, but I've got like three triathlons booked in. Uh, I've got a fight booked in. So. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 so awesome. that's so awesome. <laughs> if I don't keep busy, then it's just going to go downhill. So I've just got to keep everything just every day, just flat out. I, I'm, I'm not mad at you. So like, and so, um, wow, that's, yeah, that, that's, 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 that's like, I almost, I was like, 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 lost my train of thought just, you know, just, just thinking about you know, all, all, that, all that stuff you're doing. But, and so, um, so colitis, you know. So you're saying that you, know, that you haven't, you know, fought since you know since you're uh, had to have the ostomy and stuff. And so, um, so for the, for the folks listening, you know, can you give us a little bit of background, you know, on kind of what led up to your diagnosis? Yeah. So uh, it was it started probably about ten years ago. I I just um, I was just getting the, the common symptoms like cramping, losing a lot of the blood, going to the toilet constantly about fifty times. And I, I kept going to the, the doctors and for about a year, they kept saying it was IBS. And mm -hmm. uh, I've had a lot of people message me saying this is the same thing. So I'm, I'm like, now, because I'm raising awareness, people are coming to me saying, I've got these symptoms. I've been, they're saying it's IBS, but that's what I went through. So I've been telling them to go straight, like, you know, to try and go, just go to A&E and say, look, I, I need to be seen. Because uh, that's what they just kept doing, saying it was IBS. They didn't really know. And then eventually I went to get some blood tests and I just went to A&E hospital um, and uh, the information was high. So they sent me to a specialist, um, waited another six months, got a camera. And then that was when it was like severe colitis straight away. So yeah. at, the, at the time I knew it was bad, but um, sometimes for the first maybe five years, it was really severe. And then I kind of went into remission for maybe a year. And that's when I kind of took it for granted a little bit. And then that's when it went downhill last year, uh, beginning of beginning of COVID, just the start of COVID it was, well, just after. Um, and then, yeah, it just went downhill really quick. But yeah, about about 10 years I've, I've been suffering. So mm. pretty much most of my career, my first fight was 10 years ago. But um, yeah, it's pretty much every fight I've had has been really Bad. I, I don't think I should have even had any fights, <laughs> but I managed to get this far. So yeah, it's pretty mad. Man, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing incredible. What, like, yeah, it's amazing what like grit, grit and determination can do. You know? Yeah, definitely. So, obviously, you don't know. I didn't realize how fatigued and ill I was because when you've had it for so long, you just kind of deal with it, don't you? You just like you just. It's this day to day thing. You just like. Because you are in pain, but you just put it to the back of your mind and you just think, oh, just crack on, it's there. Just deal with it. I know what's coming. And then even when you're flaring up on the toilet, you just get on with it. You're just like, oh, it's just another flare up. But like if any normal human like didn't experience that, like when my partner like has a bit of cramping, like, you know, bad stomach, like, geez, I don't I couldn't imagine what you was going through. I'm like, yeah, this just deal with it. That's what just used to put up with it and then now, since having the allostomy bag, I've realised how ill I actually was, and it was—it's quite bad, really. Like, I, I couldn't believe like I used to live like that. The crazy. quality of life changed and improved when you got the bag. Hundred percent, yeah. It's, um, it's just like it's weird not having the cramping anymore. You know, every day, like, and it's weird not rushing to the toilet. I don't fart anymore. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's it, it is mad, like. I thought the bag was going to be, um, I thought I thought my career was going to be over. I thought my life was going to be changing. And my life's 
change just for the better, really. I'm doing everything I did before just better because I've got more energy. Um, I'm not worrying about toil. I'm not stressing. Like for me, fight camps, I, I used to, um, I couldn't go any further than 5K on a run because my stomach would be too bad. So, but now I'm doing half a marathons and four hour bike rides. So it's, it's a big relief and not much stress. There's less stress now. Yeah, it's, it is crazy, really, how bad it actually is. That's no amazing. one can see it. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, you're an inspiration to a lot of people because, I mean, just thinking about you know, anybody out there that's thinking about being a fighter or something like that, it's like, well, you know, Rico can do it. If Rico's out there fighting, you know, you know fighting out of, you know, out of messed up, jacked up stomach, you know, uh, you know I, think, I, think, I think anybody can do it. So, like, it's pure determination, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Just, you know, it's like, you know, that, you know, how bad do you want it? Right, you know, how bad do you want it? You know, yeah, exactly. Mm. That's it. You just gotta, you just gotta like it. It's, it's all in the mindset, obviously. But sometimes I was a bit stupid training. I was doing too much training, then losing blood while I'm training, and I'm like, it's carrying on. And next day I'd carry on, but I didn't used to listen to my body either. Like that's how crazy my mindset is. It's just like just train through it. And but yeah, it's it's one of them things. I don't really, I don't regret anything I've done because it's. It's where I am. Everything happens for a reason. I believe, and that's where I am now. I suppose so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. So, you know, beyond, you know, beyond fighting, you know, like, uh, what were some, you know, what are some things that you do to kind of, you know, to, to keep your, to keep your, your mind, your mind, you know, in a positive, in a in positive. You know, what, what do you do to kind of, you know, yeah, to, yeah, to, to maintain positivity, to make you know, just, um, because you know, just having, having colitis. You know, having you know having ostomy, ileostomy, those kind of things can just be so you know anxiety, depression, you know all these things. And so I know working yeah. on the exercising really helps and stuff like that. But you know that so. But like, what else do you do in your life to try to you know maintain? Yeah. Your, so basically, uh, yeah. So I'm on I'm on an ilostomy group on Facebook, and everything's just so negative, and everyone's moaning. I think I'm the only one who loves having this bag, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, there, there is a quite a lot who, who loves the bags. It's changed their life. But I think for me, it's just um, I've set that many targets and goals in my head for like what I want to do and where I want to be. It's like all I'm thinking about is that. And I never think about my bag anymore. Like I never even sometimes I forget it's there because I'm not focused on what I want to do and what where I want to be. Like I've got um, like I've got a set program, training program, triathlon and boxing um, for my next camp. I'm getting ready for my next camp to start. And like every day I'm just thinking, right, what session am I going to do? So like every day I've got like little targets. So I think it's important to set like targets every day, small little goals, and then set some bigger ones. Like obviously I've got, I booked like two triathlons um, back to back. Uh, that's in two weeks. And then I've got um, the Jimmy fight coming up and then, then I've got me end goals like you know fighting fighting in the states, fighting in America, fighting around the world. So, like in my mind, I'm just like thinking, right, I've just got to just get on with it. Like, every session, I'm just treating like as a fight, and in my mind, it's just giving me so much motivation because I'm thinking where I want to be. And and sometimes I think when I'm struggling in training, like if I've got a hard session, I'll think what I've been through, and I'm like, listen, I'm going to prove people wrong. Like, you know what I mean? So I, some, I just think of like laying in that hospital bed, like on my deathbed and I'm like, I'm going to smash this and get through this workout. You know, like, every day I'm just like trying to, it's crazy. Really. I've never trained like this before. It's, made, it's made, just made me so much stronger. It's, it's unbelievable. But uh, yeah, really good. Like really good. My mindset's bulletproof. <laughs> it's crazy how we push through things. I know, I know, I know. Like, yeah, I mean, so that's, Oh man, that's, so um, I'm trying to think what, what else I was going to ask you. So, um, yeah, so what, yeah, so what are things? What are some things you're doing to, you know, that so this fight you're, the fight you're having in August, and so what are some specific things that you're doing to train uh, between now and then? Um, what in the mindset or training? Um, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, like, like I guess you know, yeah, like, how do you, yeah, like how do you prepare? Like that, that that'd be a better question. Is like, yeah, like, like 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 how do you prepare you know, mentally, you know, for you know, for these fights? So mentally, before the fights, like um, I would, uh, I'd mentally prepare by just every day. I'd be visualizing, I'd be visualizing Jimmy Sweeney every day, and like 
mm-hmm. even visualizing the whole whole night. But so the 14th of August is the fight night, and in my head, because I've been to the same venue, London O2, in my head I'll just be visualizing like um, weighing in, uh, warming up in the background, uh, in the backstage, like walking out to the fight, and just visualizing like when I'm in the fight. Do you know what I mean? Like visualizing knocking him out every day. Because this is what I did for the last fight, and I was visualizing just winning every for about a whole year. Because I, I had a, I had, the, I was in the prize fighting tournament, and the winner gets to fight Jimmy. But it was kind of bad because I didn't, I didn't, I looked past every person, and I was just thinking of Jimmy Sweeney at the end. And for a whole year, I was just visualizing beating him, and mentally, that's all I did, and, and it happened, and it was just crazy. So, so I'm, I'm just doing the same again, but just better, to be fair. And I believe. It's like similar to like Conor McGregor, what he says, you know, he visualizes knocking people out. And the more you do, it it happens all the time. So if you mentally prepare really well, then you know what I mean? It's it's better than being physically prepared because if you're meant, if you can be in the best shape ever, but then if you're mentally, your mental stage just goes before a fight, then you've lost straight away. Because I've had that, I've I've been in an amateur fight before where I've lost before I've already walked in because I'm just, I was nervous. I was thinking about what the guy was doing. Then I've already lost, and I went out and lost the submission. So <laughs> it's all in the mindset, really. It's pretty. It's pretty mad walking into a fight, but obviously two guys want to take each other's heads off. So right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, it's mad. With um, I have UC as well, and I deal with a lot of inflammation. Do you deal yeah. with inflammation as well? especially with your, like, knuckles, I get a bad inflammation, and it's just from playing video games. I can't imagine bare-knuckle boxing. Get, like, crampy feelings, and uh, it feels like arthritis sometimes. Is that what... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I do get that in my hands uh, sometimes, especially when it's cold, but when it's when it's warm, it, it's it's normally all right, but um, yeah, obviously training all the time and uh, a lot of endurance, I get a lot of inflammation in the body, so... That's where I try and get the most because rec- recovery is most important. While you know you're training two, three times a day, so and again, I'm like I've always struggled with sleeping, so that's another thing I need to try and work on sleep because sleep's yeah. like number one recovery. But I do struggle sleeping sometimes because during the day I ain't got time to think. Like mm-hmm. I'm just non-stop every day, but then comes to bedtime, it's like everything's rushing through my mind. I'm like I can't switch off. Right. I, have the same, I have the same problem. I have the same problem. I can't, same here. Yeah, I can't. I have, a, I have a really hard time turning off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My mm. missus hits the pillow, she's gone. It winds me up. And <laughs> I'm there, like, up and down all night, like, trying to figure out, come on. So I, I've even, like, trying, I'm starting to meditate a little bit before bed now. And mm. it's, it's helping a little bit, to be fair. I've got, um, I've actually got one of my coaches, uh, triathlon. He does Ironmans and triathlons. And he's a mind coach, John Wattam. And uh, he's, he's so good with a mind. He gets you in a good mental state. And uh, he, he sent me some stuff over to try and get some, like, meditating, like, some YouTube stuff. So that all helps as well. But, and obviously, yeah, it takes away a bit of the information as well, you know, resting, recovery, meditation. Um, I have a lot of ice baths as well. So they're good for information. Cold water therapy, I yeah. highly recommend Takes a bit of anxiety, stress away as well. It's pretty good, really good. Do you okay. take any supplements? Um, I take turmeric, uh, curcumin and turmeric, um, vitamin D three and some like omega threes and just protein. Really, yeah, that's about it. Okay. I just have a really good diet, so I think diet's the most important. Diet's like medicine, food's medicine. So yes, what you put into your body, I suppose. But obviously with colitis and Crohn's is a different story because when I was in a fight camp, I was like trying to cut weight. Sometimes I'd cut 10 kg to fight and it's ridiculous. But trying to eat salads and fruit, they, they make your, your stomach worse. So it's like, what you can't win. It's, <laughs> and then I'd have to starve myself and then that won't work because that would uh, obviously a bit I used to try a lot of fasting as well like intermittent fasting mm-hmm. that used to um, take the information away a little bit as well and it used to help me some it settled down um, but then you can't perform train while fasting so it was a it was a nightmare trying to lose, to, lose. <laughs> trying to 
trying to do weight cuts for fight with colitis is like horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Well, so I say again, salute, you know, salute to everything that you've accomplished. You know, it's it's no you know, it's no small feat. And so I'm, <laughs> you know, you know, you definitely have our respect over here. You know, our fellow yeah. our fellow cross colitis veterans. And so um. You know, we, um, I, just, I just wanted to ask you, I guess, a small favor. We have, um, in addition to the show, we have um, actual merch. Um, like, we have, like, uh, hoodies and T-shirts and stuff like that. And so if I was to send a hoodie out to, you know, your way, would you, you know, kind of rock it for us? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. That would be good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We appreciate you. Yeah, we'll make sure that, you know, we get you one. You know, we just appreciate you being here. And, you know, I think it would be really awesome to have, you know, you know, like a, a boxer, you know, a fighter, all that stuff, you know, rocking better, clones better, clients better and stuff. So, um, yeah. But, but yeah, so like um, one, you know, I guess before we get out of here, um, you, know, uh, you, know, if, you know, if people want to support you, if people want to reach out to you, um, you, know, if, you know, you know, like how can they do so? And also, you know, if there's any, you know, chronic colitis, you know, things that you're working on that people can, uh, you know, like, like I'll reach out to you too about. Yeah, so um, on Instagram, it's Rico, Franco BKB and uh, same as uh, Facebook page Rico Bonbon Franco. Don't ask about the bonbon. That's just uh, I used to eat a lot of bonbon sweets when I was a kid, and uh, everyone used to call me bonbon. <laughs> I've even called me dog bonbon as well. So <laughs> um, it's just a funny fight name, I suppose. But yeah, um, that's why I basically uh, since getting the allostomy, I didn't really know much about it. Um, I had one friend that had an alostomy bag, but I didn't know he had it until I said I was going for surgery. And then he kind of he kind of contacted me and said I had the bag, but I didn't really know anything about alostomies or I you know that's how why I was so nervous. But that's why I'm using my platform now to do a bit of raising awareness for it and trying to help some people out. And since coming out, um, posting about it, um, you know, there's so many people, like hundreds of people, have been messaging me, and it's crazy how many people's got colitis, Crohn's, elostromy, and, you know, struggling daily with it. And, you know, I just, I get a buzz out of helping people. So, because I know what you, I know how it's, how bad it is. And normal people don't really understand. They're like, you know, stay strong, but they don't understand how bad it is. Um, so, yeah, just helping, helping some people out is uh, definitely, definitely a good buzz. And if I can just help a few more out, that'll be great. You know what I mean? So that's why I keep posting pictures of me me top off just with the bag hanging out <laughs> i don't mind yeah, so, yeah. Awesome. I, mean, I, mean, I mean yeah because i mean that that was kind of what this uh, like that like struck me it was like when i saw it, i was like wow this you know this dude and not not only is he a talented accomplished fighter you know but you know but he also has colitis you know in the bag and all that stuff and it's like man i know that's inspiring to people I, I, I know that moves people and stuff like that you know um <laughs> and so um so, yeah. I mean, you're you know so, you, so you're an inspiration and um, you know, you know, so, and we definitely appreciate you being here, taking the, taking the time out, you know, uh, being patient, you know, you know, like, like getting this all scheduled and set up, all that. So, you know, so yeah. appreciate you, man. And, um, but, you know, for, for anybody listening, if you like, if you like, if you like Crohn's Veteran and you like what we're doing, uh, please support us, you know, subscribe. You can check us out at www.cronesveteran.com. Uh, uh, like I was telling uh, Rico here, we have amazing Crohn's and Colitis merch on our Teespring store. So you can check, please check that out too. Uh, we're on YouTube. Uh, we're on all the podcast platforms, uh, Apple, YouTube, Spotify, all that cool stuff. Uh, please support us again. Subscribe. Hit the like button, all that stuff, all that fun stuff. And again, uh, Rico, um, uh, wishing you uh, much success in all your, in all your endeavors. And, and thank you so much. We're grateful for you being here, man. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Thank you both for uh, having me on. And I think it's a great thing what you're both doing, you know, raising that awareness for such a horrible thing. So, you know, just making people more confident as well, I suppose. So, yeah, just keep getting it out there. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Really good. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We'll see you later. Thank you very All much. Right. All right. Bye-bye.